So in this video, what I want to talk about is differentiation and dimensional analysis. And in the next video I'm going to make, I'm going to talk about integration and dimensional analysis. So let's start off with the definition of a derivative as a limiting procedure. And we say that if we have a function, <coughs> excuse me, f of t, and we differentiate it with respect to t, we obtain that as the limit as h goes to zero of our function f evaluated at t plus h minus f of t, all divided by h. And this is a limiting procedure because if you just set h equals zero, the numerator would vanish because you'd have f of t minus f of t, and you would also be dividing by zero. So you'd have zero over zero, and that is not defined. So to talk about dimensional analysis and differentiation, let's assume that t is something physical. And I'm going to be explicit and say that t is time. So the dimension of time we write as capital T. So capital letters, capital T is time, and on the next slides we'll have capital L for length and capital M for mass. And notation that is widely used is you put a square bracket around something such as T, and that denotes the dimension of the quantity. So the dimension of T is, as we've just said, capital T. And the result that we're going to show on the next slide is that the dimension of the derivative of f of t with respect to t is going to be the dimension of the function that we are differentiating divided by the dimension of time. In other words, it is the dimension of this function multiplied by an inverse power of time, dimension, capital T. So let's show this on the next slide and then examine some consequences. So let's start off by going back to our definition and the derivative is the limit as h goes to zero of this difference of values of our function divided by h. And the key thing to notice is that in the argument of the function we are adding h to t. And because we are adding them they must be the same type of thing, or to be more precise, they must have the same dimensions. So the fact that we add them tells us that the dimensions of h and the dimensions of time are the same, and they are capital T because we have said that we're being explicit and that T is time. So now, if we go back to looking at the dimensionality of the derivative, As we change the limit, that's just changing values and that's not going to affect the dimensionality, so we don't need to worry about that. But it is going to be the dimensionality of the numerator and that is our function at t plus h minus our function at t divided by the dimensionality of h. The numerator is a difference of two values of the function. If the function has a dimension, then its value at different um, values of the time is going to be the same. So the, the difference of these two values is going to have the dimension of the function at t. So it's going to, in the numerator, we have the dimensionality of our function at t divided by the dimensionality of h and as we have said this is just capital T. So therefore we see that the dimensionality of the derivative of our function is going to be equal to the dimensionality of the function over capital T. And that is the key result that we're now going to use. So for a very simple example, let's say 
that we have a function which we're going to differentiate with respect to t. And let's say that our function is t cubed. Well, we know what the answer is. It's 3t squared. But what about the dimensions, assuming that, as I've said, t is time? Well, the dimensionality of the derivative of t cubed is going to be the dimensionality of t cubed over the dimension of t, the variable that we are differentiating with respect to. So that's going to be t cubed over t. So it's going to be t squared. And that's exactly right, because if we look at 3t squared, the dimensionality of 3t squared 3 is just a number, t has got dimension capital T, and it's squared, so it's going to be t squared. And these two results, as they must, agree. So the key message to take away from this slide is if you differentiate with respect to a variable, then you get the dimensionality of the function that you're differentiating divided by the dimension of the variable. In other words, you subtract one power of the dimension of that variable. And this is an example. It is worth noticing that this dimensional argument, it explains why in this example, we have t squared from the derivative, but it does not explain the number 3. So in general, if you are differentiating t to some power n, and you differentiate it with respect to t, from dimensional arguments in exactly this way, you understand why this would be t to the n minus 1 as the new power does not explain the factor of n in front. But dimensional analysis is still giving you an awful lot by explaining that power. OK, so let's look at some more examples on the next slide. So in mechanics, the average velocity is found by taking the change in position and dividing it by the time taken. So the average velocity has dimensions, which are the change in positions dimensions, divided by the dimensions of the time taken. A change in position is a length, so it has dimensions of length, dividing now by the dimensions of a change in time, so that's capital T. So the dimensions are L over T, which we'll write as LT to the minus 1. What about now when we move on to calculus? So if we move on to calculus and we want to look at the instantaneous velocity, then we define the instantaneous velocity by saying that v is going to be the derivative with respect to time of position. And these should really be vectors if we're talking about velocity. So therefore, the dimensions of velocity are going to be the dimensions of the position vector divided by the dimensions of time. So that's going to be length on the top and t on the bottom, dimensions of length, dimensions of time. So it's going to be LT to the minus 1. And again, these results agree. So everything is making sense. And we see, again, that using the idea that the dimensions of the derivative operator acting on something are just 
multiplying by an inverse power of the dimensions of the variable that you are differentiating with respect to is completely consistent. So you may wish at this stage to, to, to pause the video because I'm now going to look at the acceleration vector. So acceleration is the second derivative of position with respect to time. We sometimes write this in this dot notation. And so my question is going to be, what are the dimensions of the acceleration vector? This is acceleration. And you may well be able to guess it. So let's just think about that. So acceleration, as we've said, is a second derivative. But we know what a second derivative means. It is the derivative of the derivative. So this is the derivative of the velocity and its dimensions are going to therefore be the dimensions of velocity divided by the dimensions of time, that's our variable here that we're differentiating with respect to, and that's therefore going to be lt to the minus 1 because we know that about the velocity divided by t, and that is lt to the minus 2. So that's our result. It's completely correct, but I think the method used to obtain it here was overcomplicated. It's simpler if we say the following. So the dimensions of acceleration are going to be, and now we have r that we are differentiating. So I'm just going to write the dimensions of r. And then we are differentiating with respect to t twice. Each time we differentiate it, we are going to remove one power of the dimensions of the variable t. So all I need to do is just write down here the dimensions of t squared. So this is going to be L, and then each of these is capital T. There are two such powers on the bottom, so therefore it is going to be LT to the minus 2. And I think writing it this way immediately, just reading off each time you differentiate this, or just looking at this, that we're differentiating twice tells you immediately that you can write the dimensions of acceleration as lt to the minus 2. So with this basic idea, I'm now on the next slide going to give you some exercises to look at. So on this slide, I've got two examples for us to consider. Newton's second law, force is mass times acceleration. Force is mass times acceleration. So m is mass, the dimensions of mass we write, as mentioned earlier, is capital M. So the question is, what are the dimensions of force? And then a mathematically somewhat more sophisticated example, the wave equation in one spatial dimension x, so x is um, corresponds to position in the dimension, the change in x is a distance, um, and the wave equation is a partial differential equation, but whether it's a partial derivative or a derivative, the idea that a derivative like this corresponds to reducing by two powers of the dimension of t still holds. And my question is, based upon this equation, what is the dimension of the constant c? And we can work that out from the ideas that we've had. So 
You may want to just think about that with pen and paper. On the next slide, I'm going to solve both of these problems. So here is the first example, Newton's second law. Force is mass times acceleration. Mass times the second derivative with respect to time of position. So the dimensions of force are going to be the dimensions of mass multiplied by the dimensions of x. And then we're going to divide by the dimensions of the variable t time squared, because this is a second derivative. So that's capital M, dimensions of mass, capital L for the dimensions of length. And then it's the dimensions of t, capital T, squared. So it's mlt to the minus 2. And if you think about this in terms of units, which is a much less abstract way of doing it, but sometimes useful when you're first thinking about these things, the dimensions of force are this. The units in the SI unit system are kilogram meters per second squared. And that's so clunky that we give it the shorthand name of the Newton. Okay, so that's our first example. Let's now look at the second example. So here is our second example, the wave equation in one spatial dimension x. And you may have thought for a second that I've not given you the dimensions of u. But if you look at the equation, you'll see the equation is homogeneous in u. Here we are differentiating u twice with respect to t. Here we are differentiating u twice with respect to x. So if we just look at the dimensions, Let's see what we get. So the dimensions are going to be as follows. On the left hand side, we're going to have the dimensions of u divided by the dimension of t squared, because we're differentiating twice. So I'll just write that immediately down as t squared. Here we're going to have the dimensions of c squared times the dimensions of u divided by the dimensions of x and it's a second derivative so it's the dimensions of x squared x's position has dimension l so it's l squared so when we look at this equation we see that we have the dimensions of u here and here and therefore irrespective of what they are they are going to cancel. And this is a consequence of the fact that if you look at the partial differential equation, it is homogeneous in u. We have u on each side of the equation. Each term in this equation, this partial differential equation, has one power of u. So now, remember, we want to find the dimensions of c. We can rearrange this equation by multiplying both sides by L squared. So what we obtain is that the dimensions of C squared are going to be L squared over T squared or L squared T to the minus two. Now, the dimensions of C squared from the rules for powers are going to be the dimensions of c squared. And what we have seen is we have l t to the l squared t to the minus 2 here, and that is l t to the minus 1 all squared. So therefore, from this equation, we see that the dimensions of c are l t to the minus 1. And those are the dimensions of speed or velocity. Here in this equation, c is not a vector. It's c, we have just c squared here. So we therefore immediately have the interpretation that c is the speed of the wave.
So that's an example of how dimensional analysis helps you very much to understand what the structures in a partial differential equation are doing. And with that, I'll stop this video.